Hey, welcome to another activity with our PHP 2 class. In this activity, we're going to talk about the database design for our login system. So in this uh, milestone, or in this project, we are going to use the uh, MySQL Workbench tool and create some tables that will take care of our usernames and passwords. So here's some step-by-step -step instructions that we're going to go through. So first of all, we're going to uh, use MySQL Workbench and create a uh, schema for our, our application. If you haven't installed the uh, MySQL Workbench tool yet, you need to go and do that now. So the website is here, and the current version for this video was uh, Workbench version 6.3. So when you launch the program, you're going to say, Welcome to MySQL Workbench. And you can see I've created three different connections. They all talk to the same database, but they're just uh, different names. So I'll open up the existing connection, use my password to log in. So you have to make sure that your uh, MAMP server is up and running. you got green all around. Okay, so the uh, password, the default password is root, and the user is root. So we choose that and OK, and we are logged in. All right, so the uh, list of uh, schemas is the next thing we're going to look at. So, so we're going to need to create a new schema for our commerce database. So let's do a right click in this area and choose Create Schema. So you can name this uh, whatever you wish. I'm going to call mine uh, PHP2 Store, and let's see if that'll work. And it's going to create this name right here and apply. And close. So I switch into my MAMP uh, tool here and choose Open Start Web Page. I will get the Welcome to MAMP. And I choose my PHP Admin. Let's see what uh, schemas are in here. So I just created a new one. And sure enough, there it is, PHP 2 Store. So there are no tables in it yet. Let's go and create some. So back into my SQL Workbench tool and let's go and start a new model and let's uh, create uh, a schema for this thing. So the uh, physical schema, that needs a name. It's not my DB. Let's call this PHP2 store and close it. So that will make all the changes correctly to uh, the correct database. Let's add a new diagram. And let's see, in this diagram, we're going to create a new table. So I guess the first thing we need to do is create a users table. And uh, before we start uh, just creating a bunch of stuff, let's think about several ways that we could talk about uh, usernames and passwords. So I'm going to go on and uh, just stop for a second here. So I'm going to open up a, 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 an example of a registration module that we could use. So if I had a users table and I had the basic three things in here, like your first name, last name, and age, There'd be some other stuff that would be important. So we could probably add things like uh, your your, uh, your street address. And let's see, what else might there be? A city and a state. So there's other things we could put in there. So you, you'd, you'd admit a few things here. Uh, what else? And we would probably end up need a uh, username. And we would probably want to put in a password. So we've got ourselves a basic users table. We could do it this way. So that's, that's one method. Let's go take a look at another one that would be a little bit more sophisticated. So let's take a look at another uh, schema that might be invented. So I have a system here where I have two tables. I have the user, and then I have a list of addresses that are separated. So I have a, the ability to have multiple addresses. Now why would you do that? Well, if you were to think of like um, an Amazon account, if you ever logged in there, you can have multiple credit cards and multiple shipping addresses. And so people might have more than one place that they live. So you might want to have more than one address in your database. So there's a consideration of design. Uh, I do have a, an item called is default, so that way you know which address to mail to by default. And the uh, data type is tiny integer, which is actually a true false value. So this kind of schema you would use if you want to create a program that has multiple addresses for the users. But wait, there's more. Let's take a look at a third uh, possibility for our registration system. So this one here has the users, just like we had, the addresses, 
And then we have the roles. So then the role is the ability to have uh, a person with multiple levels of access. So we might have a person that is both a customer and a admin or a customer and a salesperson. So you might want to have multiple types of roles for each user, maybe not. In your design, you might want to just have a single line here that says um, access or role and give it a number. Notice I created just an item, an integer called access level. So in my data dictionary, I would think of a, a number like zero would be the highest access and one would be uh, maybe not the administrator level, but a one could be maybe a store manager and a two could be a salesperson and so on down the line until you come to like eight or nine and that'll just be a, a guest on the website. So an access level as an integer works well with uh, your business logic when you want to have uh, requirements for certain pages that can't be viewed by everybody. So the eventual goal is we're going to create a login system. So like you see here, we got welcome to recipe list. This came from last semester. We had a login process and a login handler. And then once you've been logged in, it says you're welcome and it gives you a title and then also uh, the menu bar. So the uh, log out, log in option is what we created last semester. So you can go back and figure out what you did with your uh, first design on the registration and logout. So let's come back to our database uh, design activity here. We're going to have to think about what our uh, items are going to be. Do we have a, a user with uh, first and last name, addresses, multiple addresses, or no? And then when you're done following these instructions, you should have an ER diagram that we created, and then also we're going to create what's called the data dictionary. Now the data dictionary is just a list of what each of these items means, how to interpret it. So for instance, if I were to build a data dictionary for this, and uh, as I mentioned, access level is an integer. In my data dictionary, I would specify what each access level means. Uh, zero is admin, one is store manager, two is customer, and so on. And so any items in here that need explanation would go in your data dictionary. So check through the requirements here and get the deliverables right, and then you are finished with Activity 7.